This podcast is powered by The Plug. I'm your host, Chardonnay, a.k.a. Coco Madame, and I'm so excited to be here. What's up, everyone, and welcome to Hustle Bunny. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Hustle Bunny. I'm your host, Chardonnay, a.k.a. Coco Madame, and I'm here today with a very handsome, looks good in a speedo, Rob with a little <laughs> sassy ladies. Um, he's been a friend of mine now for over seven years. Welcome, Rob. Hey, thanks for having me. <laughs> well, I'm glad you decided to join me. <laughs> you didn't really have a choice. Yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> Kicking and screaming. <laughs> always, always. Well, welcome. Um, as always, I like to start off the show with three icebreaker questions to, you know, take the edge off a little bit. Uh-huh. So, first question. I'll start easy on you. What's your favorite food? Oh, uh, that would probably be all food, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, You're not a picky eater. No, I am not. <laughs> I'm a survivor, as I say. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good one. Um, let's see. Biggest celebrity crush? Oh, gosh. Uh, oh, yeah, I think about this. Yeah, no, I, I haven't thought about that type of stuff in a while uh, since I was a kid. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, gosh. Uh, you know the girl from, have you ever seen the movie Casper? Yeah. Or uh, Adam's Family? Yes. The the original one? Uh, it's the gal, the, the brunette gal in there. The mom or the daughter? The daughter. Yeah. Yes, yes. She grew up, and who did she turn into? I know who you're talking about, but she was, like, big in that era. Early 2000s, she was, like, super hot. Right. Yes, yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, she was my crush. That's that's surprising. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I just, I that's a very specific girl. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. I like it, though. I like it. And then, I guess, my last question. What's your favorite position? <laughs> Sitting down. <laughs> you are terrible. You are the worst, worst kind of person. That was. You uh, like it when girls uh, do all the work, don't you? Uh, oh, well, who wouldn't? <laughs> Hardworking women over here, non-working men. This is where we're at. This is, it's the common error. <laughs> Well, now that we got you all loosened up and you like to sit down, I guess. Oh, right. Well, just <laughs> were you well right now? You're you're in your favorite position. Yes, you know, I'm, I'm good to go. <laughs> so, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, what you're about, what you do, um, how you got your start. I'm a Denver-based photographer slash videographer. I've been doing it for about a decade. Mm-hmm. Um, let me see how I got to start. I started with. Uh, just grabbing a camera and asking um, a co-worker's wife if she modeled for me as I practiced this whole thing. We kind of came up with the whole idea together. I was kind of sharing with them what I wanted to do, and she volunteered. And uh, went ahead, and that was my first shoot. So I was pretty scared because the first thing I did was boudoir. Yeah, yeah. And so I was uh, a little nervous about that. And uh, it turned out fine, a whole bit like that. Uh, and her her cousin even actually joined in the photo shoot too. Really? So it was two gals at once that I was shooting for a shoot that I've ever done, not knowing what I was doing, <laughs> with the guy's wife and just sitting there in corner. <laughs> well, he's all, I'm ready for this to pop off. He was ready for it to turn into an orgy, I'm sure. Um, so what, like, was it nerve wracking to shoot like your your boss's wife? Like, how did that come about? Like. Well, it was my coworker's wife. Your coworker's Co- wife. Yeah, co-worker's okay, wife. my my bad. Yeah, yeah no. Um, basically, I just hung out with them, and then I mentioned to them, and then they uh, what I was trying to do with, uh, and that I was looking for people to shoot to practice on. Right, right. And uh, and she just happened to volunteer right then and there, and then we went to their apartment, and they, they had a small apartment, two bedroom apartment, pretty small apartment, and we just did it there on their dining room kitchen table (laughs) 
<laughs> so it, it, it ring, er, you know, had a high class uh, sense to it. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. On the dining room table. Keep it classy, baby. I like that. I like that. Um, did you take any cl- like classes or were you always interested in doing like glamour photography or? Glamour photography actually is what got me into it. Okay. Um, but no, I could care less about a camera before you know, the age of 30. Like I didn't, yeah. I didn't touch a camera. I didn't even think about it. So, um, it just kind of started, got a spurt, you know, um, an idea from somebody else and they uh, said, well, this is what you know you can do with it. And I went, wow, that sounds cool. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So I said, and I went ahead and tried, and then uh, so it kind of started off as a curiosity thing, and then I kind of got into the more of the art of actually photography in general. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. Um. So with that being said, I'm gonna pause this. <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right. Um, so yeah, with that being said, did you like ever want to do magazines? Were you like into different like men's magazines or like Maxim or fashion or, or was it just, you know, like you say, you didn't get into it until you're like in your thirties. Was it just like your attention? Yeah. Actually, Maxim magazine was kind of a a big thing back Mm -hmm. then. And, uh, you know, they still had the magazine itself, uh, available everywhere. Yeah. Now it's, uh, I believe it's almost all digital. Yeah, all the magazines are digital now. Yeah, so I haven't I haven't seen one uh, at least in a long time. But yeah, that used to be the thing. The Maximum Hometown Hotties, right, right, was the big one that everybody was like wow about. And then you had, of course, Playboy and all that type of jazz, which was you know the glamour side. And mm-hmm. I didn't know the difference back then. I was like, oh, okay, pretty women lingerie. Okay, it's all the same thing. But actually, there's uh, as you. Grew in the industry, you learned there's sections of uh, boudoir photography. You got, you know, you got your um, as well as your fashion uh, photography, your nude, your nude art, and all that type of jazz. So all is a little bit different uh, versions um, with different goals. Right, right. So, like, uh, you know, for fashion, it's mostly product right. that you're trying to show off, rather than the model. Right. And then glamour is 100% about the model. Yeah. Right. And that's the main focus. And like selling that fantasy. <laughs> and, so, and you know what? Like for for people that don't, no one probably knows this, but you were the first photographer I shot nude with. All nude. Full nude. Ooh. <laughs> yes. Yes. I was making that transition from fashion modeling because I'd hit that age to where like I got like curvy, like I got my butt, I got my boobs in, and then like fashion was like out of the question, right? right? Yeah. So I was in that weird transition where I looked like a fashion model. I was doing glamour. Um, Thank you for listening to this episode. If you or your company are looking to jump into the podcast world, now is the time. The Plug Agency is here to connect you to the full power of podcasting. You just record and leave the rest to us. The people are listening and want to hear from you. Theplug-agency.com. That's theplug-agency.com. Click the link in the episode description for an exclusive offer. And you know what? Surprisingly, like I felt, I felt super comfortable shooting nude with you. Um, and I know like a lot of girls have issues with that. Like, how do you make women feel comfortable like doing nude? Or do you know, like, can you tell like if a model is meant to do nude or not to do nude? Cause you know, I've come to realize that there's like a lot of girls out there that want to shoot nude, but then they feel uncomfortable or they shoot it and then regret it. Well, there's, there's two things I always talk to models about when I shoot with people and there's a What's your personality type? What would you like if you didn't have any of the world to say one thing or nothing uh, or another based on what you're doing? And uh, so I, that's basically like who they are. Right. And then the next thing I'd end up doing was, uh, you know, ask them, okay, with the rules of society in place, you know, right? what are you comfortable with people seeing? Right. And that's usually a different answer. Mm-hmm. And so, and then you shoot with the person, and uh, based on their vibes and how they model, you can get a character out of them. Right. You can say, uh, this person is a fashion, you know, model, so she's got a really, you know, really good angles for fashion. Or this person's more of a sexy type model that, uh, you know, because she's got good curves, like you're saying, uh, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, and then 
the attitude is 100% the other part of it. As far as making people feel comfortable, uh, I really uh, let that be their decision. Right. So that's really up to 100% up to them. Um, I always clarify and I say I mean no offense when I ask for things because I'm not afraid to ask for things. But I always want to, them to know I'm respecting them. Right. So I want them to go, okay, uh, yeah, that sounds fun. We can try that. I right. said, well, okay, if that wasn't actually in the plan to begin with. Or if it was in the plan, then, you know, I'm, it's a different uh, scenario. Then I'm expecting to shoot whatever we talked about. Right. So that that's the biggest thing, honestly, with models is you want um, them to follow through with whatever they agreed upon doing for the subject matter. And uh, so if you're going to shoot swimwear, they bring bathing suits or you have a designer bring them or whatever it is. Or if you're going to shoot, you know, fitness, you know, mm -hmm. they have fitness outfits. If they're going to shoot nude, then, they're, you know, they're well-groomed. <laughs> right, yes, yes. Don't be yeah. coming in there with no wolf monkeys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was a thing in the 60s and 70s, you know. And you know what? I, you know what? Some of it, like a well-groomed bush is nice. Yeah, yeah. You know? Because it's coming back. I've realized that. Like, it's coming back. Well, you've seen the, uh, have you seen the HBO series, uh, what was it, Westworld? Yes. Well, there's a lot of nudity in that. Right. Nudity in that one. Anyway, the, I forgot the name of the character, the main character there, but the gal, um, she talks about Hood Bush and the whole bit like that. And right. They actually, uh, to do that scenes, they actually had to add on Bush for people that were shaved. Oh, and so she so, yeah. came out natural, and she was like, "I didn't have a problem with that, you know." Yeah, yeah. And that was, you know, the way to make it a little bit less sensual, I guess. Yes, yeah. and the and the because then the nudity was more about them being uh, treated as lower than human beings, right? Yeah, it really wasn't about sexuality. Yeah, so much. Yeah. Which I think is kind of shitty, though. With like when it comes with like sexuality, it's like when you're naked and you're okay with being naked. Society makes it seem like that's not okay, and they make you seem less than human. Don't you think that's kind of fucked up, though? You know, like that's such like a deep thing. You know, because if you're okay with being, you know, quote unquote, I guess a hoe, which people make it seem, which it really isn't being a hoe, it just means like you are just okay with being sexually free. It's fucked up. You know, it is because it causes a lot of psychological issues, I think. Oh, definitely. And I and I feel like that's when, when girls like model, they do like the sexy thing. It's like that double-sided sword, right? Like people love to look at it, or else porn wouldn't exist. Like being sexy wouldn't be a multi-billion dollar industry if it wasn't good. You know what I mean? Like if it wasn't okay. Right. Well, it's, or people weren't consuming it. But everyone's consuming it. Right. That's human nature, I think. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know... if. Whatever, to each their own, right? But I'm all I'm all sex positive, you know, and I think that you know, go, women go and men. Yes, go team go. Go team go. But yeah, to get back on track here, we're never really on track on this podcast, but but yeah, so with that being said, with women and their sexuality, do you find that um because when I worked with you and over the years, I've become more into my sexuality. Do you find that women tend to do that? Or do you find that women kind of like because of society standards or because they have a new boyfriend or something that they don't want to show that side of, they kind of recluse? Um, be honest with you, it's mostly the recluse that happens. Mm -hmm. um, it's the lack of support. Yeah. Uh, by far, that makes a big difference uh, from relationships, mm -hmm. boyfriends, and uh, girlfriends, as, even too, as well as family. Right. So you really, on that side of things, that's just a psychology thing that women have to go through in general. Right. And, uh, I mean, everybody wants, wants to have fun and be, you know, sexually active and, you know, sexual in their personal lives, but they don't necessarily want to share that. Right. And but the people that are okay with people seeing that side of them, um, everybody has that same side. Exactly. It's, it's whether you want it, uh, you know, shown or not. And then you have the people that are really uh, judgmental on that. Yeah. You know, you know, different types of groups, religious groups, and that type of stuff that are really condone. Uh, well, put that down. People uh, put people down that do that. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it's really they got to. Act like I, I basically here's what I say: if to, if you're going to be a model, you're going to be you're standing out. Mm -hmm. And so if you want to if you want to stand out and you're okay with that, you have to okay with being who you are, 
will allow you the most success. Right. Because you won't be fighting yourself. Right. And um, and then the support allows that to be able to happen. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Be yourself. Be true to yourself. That's like the biggest thing with this industry. Because if you're not, you'll get eaten up alive and you'll lose sight of yourself and you'll be wishy-washy and that's not good for anybody. Oh, no. no. Um, with that also being said, being like a male photographer um, in this industry, like, you know, a lot of women always question like, you know, I work with like this photographer, or, like that photographer, they gave me bad vibes or... Um, you know, this person has 20,000 followers. This person only has 200 followers. Like, um, but the guy that I work with at 20,000, he was more of a creep than the guy who had 200 followers. Like, so how do you kind of guide or what's your advice to women who's looking to work with photographers and kind of like, you know, screening? Cause you know, we're so big with like social media and you know, the look of things. Um, so how do you kind of maneuver and like deal with that or your advice for women? On if there are women looking to get into modeling in general, mm -hmm. then they got to know the genres. Right. Uh, first of all, what 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 is what genre? Right. And then uh, once they know that information, then they got to ask themselves, what genre do I like the most? What mm -hmm. am I interested in? Right. And then uh, go from there. And then what what's their goal or you know what's their drive? Right. Why are they getting into modeling? Is it something they're doing for fun? Is it something that they they want to get serious in, you know, walking New York Fashion Week with? Mm -hmm. Or is it something that they, you know, w want to have a, the OnlyFans page? And that's why they're yeah, getting into yeah, it. Well, yeah. you know. So it's really kind of their own drive. But when it comes to their own personal, I guess, morality is up to them. You know, mm -hmm. what they consider to be okay for them is going to be the right thing for them. Right. Because, uh, but as far as guiding through photographers and, you know, people to work with, makeup artists and hairstylists and all mm -hmm. that jazz, is I always tell them to take um, what people say with opinions of, on people mm -hmm. uh, with a grain of salt, you know, and sit there and go in and judge what their personal interaction was with that person mm -hmm. if they decide to go work with that person. Right. So, you know, whatever their personal interaction was... Um, is going to determine what they think of that person ultimately. Right. And then, you know, you can take the advice and you, if you got a lot of people saying negative things, mm -hmm. then, you know, okay, be a little bit more cautious. If you have got, if you got one person saying negative things, you know, go, cool. maybe that person just, and that other person didn't click. Right. Maybe that was, maybe there was a misunderstanding. Maybe, right. maybe there was, uh, you know, a, bad vibe like he was saying yeah yeah that type of yes but i also tell him to trust the gut yeah because your gut is right yeah yeah like uh, it, your, your gut is right and uh if you got to do things to make you relax to do a photo shoot mm -hmm. um drugs or you know alcohol just to do a photo shoot in general it's probably not the best industry for you to be in yes. because you're not comfortable with yourself yet. Yeah. And then it's a slippery slope, right? Yeah. And then you start to get messy. And then like, because you know, I've been offered to smoke and drink on photo shoot, mostly drink on photo shoots. You would have a glass of I'm like, no, I don't. Because I don't want to lose focus. And then like, you know, you get sloppy. Right. You can see it in your pictures. And if you like smoke weed before a photo shoot, I'm sorry, but you're going to have like fucking lazy eyes. Okay, you're not going to be moving. You're, like, things are going to be moving differently than you a picture in your head. Right. You're going to be disappointed. And don't get mad if the photographer doesn't call you back. You know what I mean? For, like, another shoot or if you reach out for them. So, no, yeah. Doing, I don't ever drink. I don't ever smoke before a shoot. That's just, that's just good advice. Afterwards, I mean, I'm all down. Right. But have you ever had any, like, like, you know, I guess not bad experiences, but where someone... Of course, everyone's had their name dragged through the dirt. But, like, have you ever had that experience where, like, a model had misunderstanding or miscommunication with you? And then, like, another model worked with you and was like, oh, God, like, thank God you're not, like, what this other person said? I've never had that. I've had the, the definitely the misunderstanding happen. Right. And that was really weird because it was uh, not a, um, uh, a sexy shoot by any standpoint. Right. It was... Uh, it was a bikini shoot of a bikini competitor. Okay, like a fitness model, like yeah. the physique yeah. bikini model. Yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah. got it. And then it was outside mm -hmm. um, in a shopping mall. Can't tell you which one. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, there was uh, 
we were, we were meeting up at like 7 a.m. Mm-hmm. And uh, so the agreement was uh, she was going to bring a swimsuit and as well uh, some uh, workout clothes. Mm-hmm. And we we're going to do the workout clothes in the park, which was the next door. Right. And then we were going to do the swimsuit next to this water fountain. Right. And uh, it was just something I came up with with a you know a, a virtual project of mine with the sun rising in the background, mm-hmm. kind of a cool look there. And uh, the person showed up and they said, "I didn't bring a swimming suit. I only brought up workout gear." You know. Right. And I went, "Okay, but we're shooting both." Mm-hmm. She goes, "Well, I'm not comfortable with doing the swimsuit." Well, you could have told me that before yeah, yeah. we got there and we were before 7 a.m. hit, you know. Right, right. That type of stuff. So the, I, I definitely got uh, upset. Mm-hmm. And that person got a bad vibe from me because I wasn't putting off a good, positive vibe at that right, point. Right, right. I was putting off an annoyance. Right. And uh, so she ended up uh, going in her car and uh, we were going to go to the park. And she kind of missed the turn, mm-hmm. and I didn't bother to tell her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, well, you know, and you know, she says, "Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I must have missed your, you know, on the way there, I must have missed it." Mm-hmm. I'm like, eh, I don't think you did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't think yeah. you did. I yeah. think you, I think you, you know, booted and tailed out of there because you got whatever vibe you got because of your maturity level. Yeah. Keep in mind, this person was all weekend before we shot in a thong bikini in mm-hmm. front of hundred. Uh, hundreds of people during bikini competitions right with her parents in the background right in the crowd so i was just like well if you're body positive about what your physique is Mm -hmm. then why would that be an issue well it's just a lack of experience yeah you know she she thought whatever she thought what was but creepers you know setting Mm -hmm. up a photo shoot or something i'm sure would went through her mind she made that reality true yeah so she thought of it that way she you know and and, you know, that I was, you know, I was uh, lucky for me. I saved a little bit of time by not, you know. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. You know, but those are the type of things where you, you know, you don't want to work with that person again. You don't want to contact that person again. Did she ever try and contact you again? Oh, no, no. And, you know, I think she was, I don't think she was into modeling enough. For her to, yeah. To, to continue her through, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a bummer. Yeah, I feel like that's just like really shitty. You know, and it happens too. Trust me, it's happened to me with photographers where like, it, but it's been the vice versa role. Cause like they know I shoot nude and you know, um, but I charge differently for that. And you know, the people try to hire me like, okay, well let's just do some, you know, swimsuits or like we can do some jeans and a t-shirt, like that type of shoot. And then halfway through the shoot, like, okay, can we do some nudes? It's like, no, you didn't book me for nudes. Right. You know, like you didn't ask me for that. So no, it's not going to happen. Right. Um, so I, I, we've all kind of been on that playing field, but that, yeah, it is all about a vibe. And, um, like you said before, like you definitely do need to be okay and comfortable and know what you're shooting. Right. Um, so you said only fans, you know, you shoot erotica, only fans, <laughs> only fans is on the up and up. Yeah. It exploded during quarantine. Um, and only the few survive cause it is a very, very hard, uh, website and think to maneuver through because there is so much free porn out there number one and number two because of quarantine now every girl has an only fans page girls guys old young couples all of it so what is your only fans experience like we know you don't have an only fans page but you shoot girls for you shoot my only fans stuff and you shoot a, a, another handful of girls only fans how do you feel about the whole only fans boom like do you think it's a good place to like you know to sell your work or do you think it'd be you know do you think it's going to fizzle out and just become like you know done with um i'm part of a group on facebook that has an uh, only fans teaching thing right and they teach people how to get a page started mm-hmm. and because it's another source of income is the main drive for the only fans thing and what people forget about only fans is like it's really show off whatever you want to show off Right. And there's a description in there, beginning of your page that you can put in there, and you can tell them what, what the person is expected to see mm-hmm. for whatever subscription per month. Right. Um, is the general average. So it, it's a really good idea for models to make money on, you know, their own work that they're, they're self publishing. Right. Um, and, and especially if they're, you know, wanting to do that anyway. You mm-hmm. know, it's a good time. Um, the, the average age range is really wide. 
Yeah. I mean, you have, yeah. you know, you have, uh, you know, mothers, uh, you know, uh, in their 50s doing it. And mm-hmm. then you have, you know, then you have gals in their 20s doing it, too. Right. So, and then you have male and female. Yeah. So, it's not just for women. So, it's... Um, but I guess the main thing is for the OnlyFans is why it got so popular is because all the, um, I guess we call sex workers. Is a common yeah, threat. sex workers. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That that's the common the current term for sex worker is they don't have a lot of places to physically go to dance or to mm-hmm. physically go to you know like they used to before with quarantine so so uh, I guess high right now so that's a good way for them to be able to make the same money doing the same thing that, you know, they've always done. Yeah. Now there's different ways to go about doing it, you know. Mm-hmm. But I always say in a business, uh, you, you have to have a business mindset to be successful at it. Right. And that's where a lot of people fall short. Mm-hmm. Is they, they want the instant, you know, gratification, money, 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 now, now, now. Mm-hmm. But they don't want to put in the effort to get the following to, right. uh, you know, get the clientele, keep the clientele, mm-hmm. you know, like you have a dancer that's not used to having clientele. Mm-hmm. She's not, she's not going to do very well on only fans. Right. But you have a dancer that's used to talking to people mm-hmm. and I'm talking about, you know, strip dancing. Right. Um, you know, they'll probably do pretty well on only fans because they're yeah. used to interacting with people. Yeah. They're used to having their regulars. They're used to like flirting and chatting. Cause you do, you do. I mean, for the, if you do have it for like the sex work, if you are posting sexy stuff, you know, like most of us are, including myself, you do have to have a relationship with your clientele. Right. You have to keep them interested and you can't, you have to have an open mind, have boundaries for yourself, of course, but have an open mind. Um, cause every guy wants something different. Um, one of the, the experiences that I offer, even when I was a dancer and, you know, being a sex worker is like the girlfriend experience. Right. So I do like the girlfriend experience. I'm like, okay, we can get to know each other. You know, we can have that like intimate time. And then, you know, whatever sexual fantasies that you have that I can give you, of course. And of course I have like my regular, just um, like abundance of stuff to just give out to like, you know, all the, all the people subscribe, but then like I custom make videos and things like that. So you do have to, do put in work and you have to have a, um, just kind of like a facade. Like, what is it that you're selling? You know, like if you're a dominatrix, if you are, you know, like the sexy, lonely housewife or whatever it is, like definitely play up on it. And when you play up on it, like you have to like play up on it. Like you have to be a hundred percent that. So, you know, I think OnlyFans is great. It's been going up and down for me personally, just because there's so many people on there now. Um, I do have some loyal fans and things like that, but sometimes I just get so overwhelmed with like responding to people's messages and requests and like custom videos. It's a full-time you know? job. It's a full-time <laughs> job. And then like you said, like, you know, there's girls who do it, right? You know, they have 200,000 followers and then they you know, on their first day, they make a hundred thousand dollars. But keep in mind, it's because they have two hundred thousand followers that are willing to go to that, that page. Yeah, that are willing to go to that page. And if they like think about it, they each pay ten dollars a month, and then you know that one time that they make that crazy amount of money, right. and then you never really hear them follow up with it because they don't want to maintain it. Right? It was just that one time come up. So don't let that go to your head either. Um. So with that being said, do you record? Male and female. Uh, yeah, I have. Yeah. Okay. So how does that work? Like, like what is this process? Because I feel like everyone like watches, you know, OnlyFans or like porn or whatever, but they really, they never really know like the process. Like, is it, is it like really big setup? Because you know, with, like photo shoots, it's a huge setup, and it's like you know, lights, camera, action. You can like take with like the pictures and stuff. But how does it work with video? Um, video is very similar. You need the lights as well. And, uh, you know, camera gear is, you know, probably a little bit different uh, unless you got a camera that can do both. Mm-hmm. Um, but the the main thing is for the setup is to get your lighting and your idea in your head and mm-hmm. share that idea with your talent or vice versa. They're sharing the idea with you so that way you know what the goal is. Yeah. And then you want to get the key to that is actually getting particular. 
Mm-hmm. So you want to be very specific on what you're shooting. So, you know, if you want, you know, these adult shots in that in that video, then you have to talk about those adult shots. Mm-hmm. You have to talk about this position, that position, and where do you want him, where do you want her, Yeah, uh, that type of stuff. And uh, the other part of it is their own chemistry, you know. Mm-hmm. So if they are a couple, right? you know, then they, they have to have good, uh, you know, energy mm-hmm. already. Right. Otherwise, you're, you're, you're not going to get much. <laughs> yeah, because if it's like one person's all in and the other person's like, nah, I'm not really trying to do all that, then it's just kind of awkward, right? right? Then one person can't perform and then it just gets weird. And then after you leave, then things really get weird, right? Because it's like... Well, yeah. Because then it kind of just breaks down. Well, you know, I don't let it get weird. Um, yeah. Well, um, I, I really kind of get along with the both people right. really easily. I can relate with the... With the ladies because of my, uh, doing so much photography and that right. type of stuff. And then with the males, um, you, I just know that males want you know, to be a part of something slash respect mm-hmm. in, within that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, doing something, as long as you show them respect and you're like, we're a team creating this. Right. This is not me as a videographer and you as you guys as a talent. Right. It's more of we're all creating it together so more it's a group effort yeah so that way the group gets what you know they want out of it right and so that's why so i always ask them the male talent as well well do you like this idea or do you have an idea as yourself you know that type of jazz and to get them involved in the creative process mm-hmm. it tends to help with people that are not professionals right you know the professionals are um few and far between to run into those mm-hmm. uh, unless you're into the mainstream of porn Right. You know, but, it, you know, you get you get male and females and, you know, a lot of the males are trying to appease their girlfriends. Mm-hmm. And uh, in that situation, yeah, you, you're definitely right where you have underperformance right. uh, issues and with uh, all the excuses that come with that. And you're like going, well, you, you you're, this is not a normal realm for you. Mm-hmm. So I would expect that. Right. You know, and that's okay. But like literally, uh, you know, we can make this any way you guys want. Right. So if they have issues, I always work around the issues until there's a, I don't want to be involved or I want this to, I want to do something else Mm -hmm. happens to be mentioned. Right. And at that point in time, then I, then I, you know, shut down the shoot, but in a very calm, chill way. Right. Not just like you suck. We're done. (laughs) Or like, this is weird. We're done. We're shutting this bitch down. Your dick can't get hard. It's (laughs) over. No, we're not talking about that. Yeah, yeah, no. no. (laughs) I want to walk out there with uh, both ankles, both knees, both, you know, everything. All body parts (laughs) attached. (laughs) No, I completely, I respect that. That's, I feel like that's great mannerisms. And that's why I really enjoy working with you. Um, cause there's not that many professional photographers out there. And I feel like a lot of women nowadays are getting caught up in the clout of new photographers or just people on social media that have, you know, they're not the greatest photographers, but because they do have a good following, we tend to reach out to them, right? Cause we want that, you know, following. that following. Right. Um, so yeah, it's nice to have like a very professional photographer. Um, so what's your favorite thing to shoot? Out of all the things, because you said you shoot fashion, swimwear, glamour, erotica. What's the most What's the most fun thing to set up and shoot for you? Um, when the model is enjoying herself. Yes. Yes. When that happens, you get gold. Right. Because um, the, the expressions on their faces, their body mannerisms, their ability to, to take direction, mm-hmm. all that plays a factor. But, you know, if they're having a good time... Um, it, the talent, anybody who's the talent, then you're having a good time because that just runs off on me. Right. Because I, uh, so it, the other thing is, as being a photographer, we have a big job as far as we're a little bit responsible for giving the good poses mm-hmm. and also being energetic mm-hmm. to, to, to give levity to, to modeling. Right. To the, and that's, that takes energy. Mm hmm. And uh, you have to keep that up for two to three hours. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Constantly talking, constantly giving direction, constantly motivating. Right. Constantly, you know, you're, 
you, you want a break. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> you want, right. You, you want 15 minutes of going, oh, okay, well, you got it now. So this yeah. is, you know, yeah. now, now we're getting something out of it, you know. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's like uh, you really, it's whatever your goal is. If your goal is 100% business, mm -hmm. then you are there to appease a client if you're a photographer, mm -hmm. videographer. Um, and your goals are different. Right. Um, if you're there for the art of it, Mm -hmm. um, there again, your goals are going to be different. If you're there for, you know, practicing because you're learning, mm -hmm. you know, there again, yeah, different different sets of goals. And that really also plays a factor on your interaction with people. Right. So if you have a, if you have a good goal in mind and you can communicate that correctly mm -hmm. on what you're trying to do and why you're trying to do it, then you give that person an opportunity to respond correctly as well. Right. So that way they can go, oh, you know, that sounds like something I'd be interested in. Or, yeah. you know, I'm new at this. I want to try this. Are you okay with this? What would you think? And they go, well, here, um, yeah, I'll try it, yeah. Or yeah. they'll say, you know, mm, that's not for me. Uh, you want to do something else? You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel you, know? you. You haven't given me, like, let's do something else yet, which I'm glad. <laughs> so that means I am good at my job. I am good. I am good about popping pussy on the internet. <laughs> it is what I was made for. <laughs> Don't you forget it. My mom probably doesn't want to hear that. Sorry, mom. <laughs> but it's what I do. Sorry, all mothers. <laughs> yeah, sorry, all mothers. But this <laughs> podcast is not for the faint at heart. Um, so... What are some of your what What's your guide for models? Let's. What's your list of things for models when they show up to a shoot? Oh, list of things that you as a photographer like you you absolutely need them to have as a model. So the do's and don'ts. I would say. What are the five do's that they have to do and like you know five don'ts or something along those lines? Um, or even the, like three. The do, the do's are pretty easy. Um, do communicate. Yes, that's number one. Yeah. Because if you guys are on two different pages, then it's like, we don't know what's going on. Right. Um, the second one is follow through on whatever you agree upon. Mm -hmm. So like I said, if you're going to do a swimsuit shoot, right. bring your swimsuit. Right. Don't bring fucking <laughs> a sweater or something, <laughs> you know? Yeah. You, you know, and, it, and then um, the second, uh, I guess the third thing on there is going to be come prepared to shoot. Don't mm -hmm. look your average self, you know, right. don't be lazy about it. Right. Um, and usually that's caused by the fourth thing is be on time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so if they're running late, sometimes they come unprepared. Right. And the, uh, depends on where you're shooting uh, and how long you're shooting. Mm -hmm. um, that can actually cost you money. Yeah, it definitely can. It uh, definitely can. So it's and, uh, if you're inviting the model to shoot your idea, Usually, you're the one paying for the studio space mm -hmm. or something like that. And uh, so that's time. There's a time clock on there. And so they don't think about that. Yeah. Yeah, you know. And so the other thing is, you know, you know what to shoot, uh, what you're going to get out of the shoot. You know that too. So, um, you know, have a discussion before the end of the shoot mm -hmm. of uh, preferably before it starts on what's it, what, what, what are you going to get. Right. How many photos are you going to get? Um, uh, are, you know, are you going to get prints like the old days? Right, you know, the right. Prints were a lot more popular. Are you going to get, um, you know, are, are you going to get, uh, I guess, uh, exposure? Mm -hmm. uh, are, you getting, are you getting monetary things? Are you getting money? Right. Are you, are you getting paid for this? Or whatever it is, you, you know ahead of time of what you're getting out of it. And, and you guys will agree that that's the agreement before you, you're in the shoot. Right. So that way, when you walk away, you're not blindsided by, you know, whatever nuances weird people have about, you know, how they share photos, mm -hmm. um, where they po post the photos, what, you know, whatever it is, you know. Right. The other thing is don't be ignorant on model releases. Mm -hmm. Model releases means that you're releasing your ability to stop that photo from going any place. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, so what you have control of during the photo shoot is two things, whether you sign the model release or not. And usually most photographers won't do a shoot if you don't sign a release. Right. Um, you, good case uh, in point for that. I had a model that had uh, done a shoot with me years ago, and I posted a photo of her, and she wanted me to take it down. 
Mm -hmm. And I, I said, well, she goes, I was, you know, I was younger back then when I did that photo shoot. Right. Can, can you take it down? And I go, well, yeah, uh, I do, can do that. Um, but I, I put a lot of time and effort into that shoot with you, mm -hmm. into editing the photos, doing the photo shoot. Mm -hmm. And I would like some type of payment back if now you have control over what I do with my work. Right. And I don't mind that, but you, you would have to, you know, make an agreement with me. Mm -hmm. So that way you, I would take those down. Right. And that person wasn't willing to make any type of a financial agreement. Right. Which is what it was, my goal was. Right. And I was like, well, then no. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. This yeah. is my work. You're, this yeah. is not, yeah, yes, you are the subject of it, mm -hmm. but this is my work. Right. And a lot of models want to go, well, this is our work together. And that's true. But from the law standpoint, mm -hmm. it, whoever's taking the picture actually owns the rights to those photos. Right. So you have to have basically paperwork to go with that mm -hmm. um, to say who's got rights to do what. Right. And um, and even if you, a photographer says, oh, this is going to be for my portfolio, if you sign that model release, mm -hmm. he can sell that photo too. Right. You know, and that's not a shady business practice. Right. That is not uncommon. Yeah. It, it's like, you, but you have to be aware of that as a model. Yeah. You know, that's why you read the contract. Yeah, you read the contract. Or if you don't have time to read at that moment, have them send you a copy. Right, yep. And always have a copy of the, either take a picture of it, have them send it to you, whatever. Or even do like a quick glance through. You know, that's what I always do before. I always have to look over some shit before I sign it because you never know. You could be signing your life away. Um, but, yeah, I've, I've had that too. Even when you work with major companies, anything, any major photographer, they're all, they, number one, they're not only covering themselves, but you need to cover yourself too. Cause if you don't agree with something in that document, then you don't have to shoot. Right. You know? Um, and then you always have something to come back on. Um, so you said, we're going to go back. You said monetizing, um, off of photography. Uh, how do, um, how do photographers normally, make their income because there's always like trade you know it's like it's such a weird industry right because there's trade work right um there's published work you know then there's publications that get you paid work right so you know let's say say we shoot for a magazine let's say we shoot for playboy and playboy doesn't pay you for your spread unless you do like playboy cyber girl whatever but shooting for playboy if you're a playboy photographer you can charge models right or just like i charge photographers because i do have that accolade right so how do how do photographers find themselves getting paid because i'm pretty sure just like models have you know they're wanting to get paid how do photographers get paid for all the photographers listening well the the key to your, that's more the business end of the photography stuff and you have to have a goal in mind mm -hmm. uh, what's your what's your services that you're offering right uh specifically in the realm that you shoot mm-hmm and then what you think your your value is and what your market is. Right. So what are other people around you charging mm -hmm. that are of your same caliber? Um, and then um, the other thing is just basically getting out there and advertising and, you know, getting that rapport from your clients that you have. Right. Like boudoir photography is uh, meant for a celebration mm -hmm. Um most of the time is why women get it. Right. So if something is being celebrated or um, something has changed in their lives to be able to, to remember that moment. Mm -hmm. And so either they got a boob job. Right. Or, you know, they got married. Mm -hmm. Or they got divorced. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, oh, free. Yeah. <laughs> Freedom. Right. Yeah. Or they got, you know... Um, you know, they got it. They got a, a job that you know wants some photos of them. Right. You know, they got whatever changed in their lives that they want to do this as a client and not as a model. Mm -hmm. This is the reason that you're looking for. And now, as models and photographers go, there's always a there's always a I guess an equilibrium that you want to find. Mm -hmm. Are you both benefiting from it if you're doing sh trade shoots? Right. You know, are you new to this and you're benefiting from the practice? Mm -hmm. Or are you an experienced person and you're benefiting from uh, from this as a model from that experience that a photographer has shooting? Mm -hmm. You know, so whoever has the, the more experience should be the one that would, should, you know, be able to ask for 
monetary things, you know, in exchange right. for that photo shoot. And, uh, you know, clients come to them. That's what you want. You want your clients to come to you. Right. And that's, you know, but if you're going after people mm -hmm. um, and trying to get them to shoot for you, you're usually not going to find a paying person mm -hmm. um, as much unless you're going for, you know, something like maternity photos. Right. Or, or like know, wedding photos right. or things that, yeah. Right. Yeah. Is that So, you know, we see all the pretty girls in the you know, magazines and things like that and boudoir, boudoir calendars. Right. And boudoir shoots on, on photographers' websites. Mm -hmm. And they tend to choose the prettiest ones. Right. Because people want to go, oh, that could be me. Exactly. And, uh, but, you know, some of the people they traded and some of the people they charge. Photographers right. charge other photographers as well. For training. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, so that's very common. Well, that's like one thing. I'm going to talk a little shit here just because I like you. <laughs> I am not talking shit about you. I, so we, you know, because we're in, you know, good old Denver. There's like an umbrella of photographers and we know that. And everyone trains with the same photographers, you oh. know, and they do those shoots. I like the fact that you don't train with those people because you have such a specific glamorous look that doesn't look like what all the group of photographers are shooting because okay. you know like everyone's shit like looks the same now right everyone just has you know i'm not gonna say any names because i'm not that bitch but when people have like you know when people have like a one aesthetic right everyone does like the group shooting and they do like the thing and it's just like one aesthetic and you're like okay well now everyone looks the same right. did you find yourself you know, wanting to be different than that? Or did you just kind of come up with your own aesthetic or like, you know? Um, I liked a, a look of, of my photos. Um, I liked the, the poppy type of, of glowy skin. Yeah, it's very glossy. It's yeah. very like, uh, it's almost like, it's like a still from like a movie, like a very vintage, I don't even know, it's not even vintage, but it has like a very, you know, like pop, like if you have, if I have color on, like the color pops, the, the, you know, makeup pops, like it looks nice, you know? Um, so yeah, I didn't mean to cut you off. So <laughs> Continue. I'm like, if you guys ever follow my Instagram page or whatever, you know, I tag them in my pictures and stuff like that. Like, you know, some of my most liked photos were some of the photos that we've taken. Um, and our best ones are the ones where you were happy. Like, oh yeah, always yeah. happy. When I was in, we have been through it. You're like my friend that, you know, we're friends. Like we're not just, you know, model photographer. We have developed a whole friendship over these past couple of years, not even a couple of years, almost fucking 10 years now. But, um, I have been, I have been happy with you. I've shot with you when I've been pissed off. I've shot with you when I'm on my period. I've shot with you when I was in a shitty relationship, no relationship. And like, Every picture and like every moment that like I go back and I like I'm like oh damn like damn that was having a rough time in my life right there you know and it shows <laughs> yeah and because we are friends and we have worked together so long you're like one of the people that was like pretty blunt with me like okay like you're clearly not in the mood today like you're clearly not well put together today so we're like not going to do this but it's helped me so a lot it's helped me out a lot um, and I will say that so I do thank you for that but yeah we have been through some shit. <laughs> We could go through a portfolio of shit to where we are like, girl, you shouldn't know. No, 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 no. But you've been kind enough to still be my friend <laughs> and still shoot me. <laughs> and over time, I think as a model, you know, you're, I don't shoot erotic with any other photographer than with you as far as like, you know, I'll shoot nudes, whatever, Playboy style nudes, but I don't shoot erotic nudes. And I think it's good to have one photographer that you can just go to and depend on and have a good relationship with. Yeah. There's a lot of successful models that just have a main photographer that they yeah. work with. I mean, it becomes a business venture. Exactly. Um, exactly. Between Cause, the two. Yeah. Cause when we're both like, you know, if you're taking the pictures and we're earning and we're getting our, our shit together, you know, if you look at like a lot of, even like a lot of the models that inspired me when I first, and I came to you and I'd like show you some of these girls pages. There was like Carrie Lachance, I think was her name. She had like one, she did like the shoe. She, you know, she, she was in Texas or something. And then there's like Serena Banks. She's like another one. Um, but they all have one aesthetic on their Instagram page. They all have one photographer on their page. And right. I'm, I'm getting to that point. I'm trying to get to that point now. Um, so yeah, I think it's good to have like a model 
photographer relationship. Oh yeah, no, the the relationship stuff are is definitely positive and growing, and you learn a lot together. Yeah, you really do, um, especially if you're both new, right, um, to it, um, or one, but. Basically, it's it, whatever your goal is. You know, is if your if your goal is to be a published model in so many magazines, mm-hmm. then you're going to want to work with a lot of people. Mm-hmm. You know, or if your if your goal is to, um, you know, make money off of your pictures, then working you don't have to work with so many photographers. Right. You know, um, and you you tend to your quality tends to grow until your creativity style. Creative uh, um, style really kind of just separates. Right. So, like, you go one way and they go another, or you're tired of shooting that style, Mm -hmm. you know. And so I've seen a lot of photographers and models go separate ways because of that. Right. Um, But really, it's communication to be able to get through whatever, uh, you know, turmoil that happens. Uh, during bad days. Right. And there's always bad days. Don't let, like I said, we have been through some shitty days where it's just been all bad. And, but it's good. Here's like one thing. Don't, you know, it took us a while to get to our friendship level. Um, and like I said, we met when we were both starting. You were, you were already kind of into it. You were a couple of years into it, but I was starting that transition. So, like I said, you're the first person I shot with when it came to like that transition. So we just kind of kept building off of that. Um, but we have gotten so comfortable with each other where it's like, okay, you know, Chardonnay, like you haven't done a shoot in a while or like you're, you know, like your body is not as tight as it was. And like, yes, these are real things. Like if you want to do glamour modeling, I am not body shaming anybody. Um, you know, curvy girls are all welcome as well too. But if you are trying to be in like a specific magazine or something like that, like you do need someone to tell you, like if you start off as a fitness model, and then you, you know, start to let yourself go. And then you want to start shooting again. Like you can't, and this is like the harsh reality of it all. You can't just get back into it. Like, and then you can't just show people old pictures of you and then expect, you know, the, a photographer to be um, as, I don't even want to say accepting, but as like, you know, like giving you such a positive response. Like you can't like, just like, you know, give false advertisement basically, you like, know? Yeah. That's, that's going on a lot because of the Instagram filters. Yeah. The oh. Instagram filters, like the stuff like this, that, and the other. And like, and I've had this happen to me too. We both have had this happen. Um, and like I said, I'm not a hater by any means. I am such a positive person with like women. I love women, but just in this very particular industry, um, kind of tailored to style and like the industry is always changing and and I will always say that but you can't be catfishing people out here y'all you guys cannot be coming in because I was supposed to do we were going to do a couple of shoots with females and then you see the females show up and then you're like whoa (laughs) yeah you're surprised you know you're like okay 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 you're like I'm not trying to you know I'm not trying to make you feel bad or nothing but this is not what I was thinking I don't know what I don't know how old those pictures you were that you you know you were posting but be honest with yourself. Be honest with the people you're working with. Like, don't be ashamed to send in photos and stuff. Like, just let us know what we're getting ourselves into, right? Because, like, if you if you show up and, like, a girl showed you pictures from, like, 2005 and it's 2020. Right. And, you know, you got a whole different person showing up. Yeah. There, and that has to go with acceptance of yourself. Right. Um, and being honest with yourself. I mean, that says a lot about character. Mm-hmm. Um, and... If you are not happy with you, where you are or where you used to be, mm-hmm. um, then getting that goal met of getting back to where you used to be, or feeling like you used to feel, right, is important. Yeah, and it's probably the most important thing you you do. And if photo shoots encourage that to happen, mm-hmm. then don't don't lie about what you look like. Right, right. You know, say this is what I look like now, and if. Being, if that attention tends to help you get motivated, right? Because you can go, okay, now I I, I know I can do better. Yeah, yeah. Then then that's a good thing. But yeah. you don't lie to people saying, you know, this is this is my photo. You know, that that's not you anymore. Yeah, exactly. Except yeah, exactly. I, that's I like how you said that. Accept it where you're at. You know, not saying that you can't still feel sexy if you've gained a few pounds or lost a few pounds or had a kid or whatever, whatever. But like you said, just be honest with yourself so we know what we're getting ourselves into. 
and getting yourself into for a photo shoot so we know how to work with you with angles. So maybe your angles aren't the same as they were back in the first picture. Maybe, you know, skin editing isn't going to be the same as in, you know, your last picture. Um, yeah, just being true to yourself. You know, we're not trying to shit on anybody. Yeah, we're just trying to make... <laughs> you're, you're allowed to change. You're allowed to age. You're allowed to do all the yeah, things. Yeah, it's that... inevitable, you know? <laughs> like, I'm getting older, you know what I mean? And I mean, I'm not as, you know, I'm only 27. But still, you know, you get older and older and older and you realize, you know, th- then you got to switch, switch it up. Then you got to change things. You got to go down a different path. But it doesn't mean you're not sexy. You're still right. sexy. Oh, yeah. And, you know... Men will always find you attractive no matter what you look like. So don't worry, yes. about, don't worry about the men. Worry about what you think about yourself. Yeah, never worry about the fucking men. They'll fuck anything. They'll fuck a sock filled with lotion. <laughs> yeah, they grew up doing that. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> they'll fuck anything with the hole, okay? They'll fuck a pocket pussy for the rest of their life. They don't give a fuck. You know? But, um, so any last words for our listeners? Just basically know what you're getting into with modeling. Right. And, uh, you know, uh, be be a good communicators, mm-hmm. um, communicator. And also uh, follow through. Always follow through. Yeah, follow through on what your goal is. Yeah, and love yourself. Love yourself for who you are, what you are. You might not, you know, be the next Victoria's Secret supermodel, but... If you do a photo shoot and you love yourself and you just want those sexy photos to just immortalize your beauty, then do it. Nothing wrong with that. Where can people find you? Or if people want to book you, I always recommend booking him for like, if you're really trying to get into like glamour, boudoir, even just like swimwear, if you just want to try out modeling, I always recommend working with you. Just because like you're a good intro photographer, <laughs> um, as well as like a you know very well established photographer as well too. But where can we find you if we want to book you, see our see your photos? So I do I do mostly social media stuff. So it's Rob GL Studios for anything that's swimwear and fashion related. Okay. Uh, and then uh, and then boudoir uh, and uh, like you said erotica that mm-hmm. type of stuff. Uh, that's on Little Sassy Ladies. So that's little underscore. Sassy underscore ladies uh, at, on Instagram. And on Facebook, you can find me under Rob GL Studios. Okay. So, yeah, both of those places. And just hit me up if you need any help or insight or, um, you know, I'll reply to basically everybody that contacts me for setting up shoots and going yeah. from there. Yeah. Well, very nice. And then photographers can also reach out to you as well, I'm assuming. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But, always yeah, get yeah. the advice, get the hookup. And yes. Well, I'm so glad you decided to join me today. It's always a pleasure. I see him. I probably see you more than I see my own self. (laughs) (laughs) And that is all the time we have today. You guys can follow me on Instagram at HustleBunnyPod. Or you guys can follow me on YouTube as well with the same name, HustleBunnyPodcast. And on Twitter at HustleBunny underscore podcast. We'll see you guys next time. (laughs) 